In order to understand Hinduism, we must learn about a few basic beliefs which form the foundation of the religion. These beliefs are rooted in both the Vedas and the Upanishads. Some of these ideas may be new to you, although some have become quite popular, such as the idea of reincarnation. Besides defining a belief system, these ideas also carry into Hindu law and rites of passage. For instance, Dharma. This stands for the ultimate moral balance of all things. Dharma belongs to the universe and to the individual as well. So just as there is a divine order of the natural and cosmic realm, there is the same order within a personal life. However, each one has the responsibility to balance his or her own dharma. Dharma is played out in all areas of life, religious, social, and familial. If a person makes a promise, the promise must be kept at all costs. Likewise, the faithful maintain their religious rituals while attending to their family's needs. But what if an individual goes astray? This leads to the next major Hindu belief, karma. Have you ever heard someone say, what goes around comes around? What about you reap what you sow? Both of these things mirror the Hindu concept of karma. Basically, karma stands for the belief that a person experiences the effects of his or her own actions, that every act or thought has consequences. Living in a balanced universe, if an individual disturbs this order, he or she will suffer commensurately. But an ethical and moral life with undisturbed dharma will lead to happiness. How then can a Hindu find hope to find redemption from wrongdoing? If the person does not lead a pure and stainless life, what hope is there for happiness? The answer lies in samsara. Now, in the Western world, samsara is commonly known as reincarnation. Samsara represents the cycle of life, death, and the rebirth in which a person carries his or her own karma. Each life cycle presents an opportunity for balance. Therefore, an individual may experience effects from past lives, although the circumstances may be totally different. In fact, many Hindus believe that a person's worldly status depends upon actions in a past life. Likewise, good thoughts and actions can liberate a person. Some Hindus believe that certain people meet in more than one life in order to achieve karmic balance. Thus, every relationship and situation becomes meaningful. What happens then when a person becomes purified? Is reincarnation an eternal process or is there another realm? The answer lies in moksha. Like heaven for the Christian, Hindus strive to reach moksha or state of changeless bliss. Moksha is achieved by living a religious devotion and morally moral integrity without any interest in worldly things. However, in maybe lifetimes, before, within the will of life, before moksha is achieved. It may be lifetimes within the will of life before moksha is achieved. The ultimate reward is relief from samsara and the union with God. Hi guys, I would like to say before we begin, we also have to make sure we like our chalice. So, I like this chalice for the warmth of love, the light of truth, and the energy of action. Hi guys, Janae Johnson here, your religious education coordinator for Unitarian Universalist Church of St. Petersburg. First off, I want to just say, I want to represent the resilience all of our families are enduring during these times. I want to congratulate you all for learning how to transition. If you're having any issues with your portal, with Focus, Clever, um, you can go on to pcsb.org and they'll be able to help you out. I know a lot of things have been happening with Microsoft Teams, so we are aware that they are working through those kinks. Hopefully next week, a lot of teachers will be able to go live with your students, with your children, and we'll just go from there. So without further ado, I'm going to go into the lesson for this week. We all know that the theme this month is liberation. 
The theme this month is liberation pertaining to the Hinduism faith. Now, there are some things that we were going to do this month. We were actually planning to go to the Hindu temple of Tampa, but we can also do virtual tours online. So without further ado, being that this Sunday is also Easter under the Christian faith, we're going to go through the lesson. So, this is our itinerary for today. We have our story. We're going to honor Sophia Lyons Fa, our arts and crafts, and our meditation, and then we will close. <clears throat> let's see, let's see. The story that I'm going to share with you today is regarding a person. I'm going to just read the story and see if you guys can guess at home. The monks continued to try to figure out who amongst them might be the Messiah. But none of them came to any conclusion. Still, they realized that they could sometimes see the Messiah in one another's faces. They could sometimes hear the Messiah in one another's faces. They can also begin to treat one another more kindly, more fairly, and just, just in case. Now, the theme connection of this particular story, I condensed it so you guys can actually take the time and go ahead and click those links that I have attached in the newsletter. The theme connection is, why do we treat one another so differently than we would treat the Messiah? This story helps liberate us from our failings into the awareness that we are all children of God, all deserving of worth and dignity. Now, I want you to take a moment and just think about that. Freeing yourself from the idea and concept that you have within yourself and thinking that you're not confounded to these ideas that you can be so much more. There is no limit on what you can take in within your mind. Our mind doesn't operate on, we only have two gigabytes of memory data. Sorry, gigabytes. Your mind is an unlimited source of data that can just come in from so many sources. So just remember to stay open and feel liberated in space. Now, I'm going to go into honoring Sophia Lyons Fa. Now, a lot of us don't even know who she is. But she is very important to know. The reason why is because she was an editor of the American Unitarian Association for Religious Education from 1937 to 1961. There's a few things that she also provided in faith. She contributed to the liberal religious movement. Now her contribution is unmeasurable. <clears throat> As an authority of the education of children, she maintained that faith should not be imposed on a child, but should grow out of natural curiosity. Our children are so broad in their thoughts, questions that children come up with. We would sit there like, how in the world did you think of that? It's so logical, but I didn't think of that because a child's mind is not confined to society standards that we have grown accustomed to. They're so much more open. Kids, I see you, I love you, and I appreciate you all with your inquisitive questions and your curiosity. Now, the author of numerous books, she also is an author of numerous books on religious education. Foss has been hailed as a true pioneer in child-directed education. In honor of her death, April 14th and Easter, we lift up Foss' view on the Easter story wisdom tale. Foss describes Jesus' resurrection not as supernatural, but as a matter of his message living on in his disciples. For Foss and many you use, Jesus offers liberation not through his death, but through his message of loving and kindness. The theme connection for that, Foss liberated children's religious education from role learning to wondering and seeking. So I wanted us to acknowledge her on this date because she did play a major role in Unitarian Universalism, especially during a sensitive time period as well. 1937 to 1961 was a very sensitive time period and then so. So, now I want to get to the arts and crafts, which is always fun. You start off with a sheet of paper like this. The paper starts off like this. Now, the way I got to this paper, give me a second. I just so happen to have paper that start out this long. So to utilize it, so I can have two sheets, I actually just simply fold it in half like so. 
and voila. But of course, you're gonna need a handy dandy pair of scissors to get this cut straight across. To skip to the part where we're getting to, this is what we're making. Our wonderful, lovely little hearts. It's a wonderful chain heart to represent the connection of love that we have with each other. Even though we are far apart, we still are very much close together. for $1.99. Cannot beat that. Of course, when you go out to the stores, stay safe. Wash your hands. We all know the drill. Things that we are accustomed to doing anyway. But even more so now, just because just got to stay safe and keep everybody well. So, for the last part of our lesson for today, I wanted to do a meditation. Um, you can take your mat outside, lay it out under the sun, lay it by a tree if you like. Anything, any place where you can get some sunlight because we've all been indoors so much more often lately. I think it's so very imperative that we get some of that solar energy into our bodies. That good old vitamin D. If you like, if you don't want to go outside, stay right inside of your home. I like to light an incense and light a candle and play some wonderful music in the background. Let me know. It's recording. So one thing I would like to say to you all, I miss you guys so very much. I would like for you to send me pictures of things that you have been doing to buy time. If you've learned to pick up a new instrument or picked up a new language, even read a book that you've been wanting to read, share pictures of your families doing that so I can get them on the newsletter. I love to see what my families are doing during these times. Also, if you did not know, you can follow us Follow U-U-S-P-R-E on Instagram, and then U-U St. Pete is on there as well. Also, you can find the Kids RE page on Facebook, and then for our YouTube Live for our sermons, you can find us at U-U St. Pete on YouTube as well. So one thing I want to say to everybody, let me extinguish the flame first. <laughs> 